The demonstration that I am going to perform was inspired by the cover of the January 2005 issue of the Journal of Chemical Education. I use this demonstration to introduce the unit which relates to how energy is involved in chemical reactions. Now the fortunate part for me with this unit is that my school is on a semester schedule by which we finish our first semester at Christmas time. So the start of this unit begins with actually the start of the chronological new year. And my students come back after that Christmas break and they're just a little bit groggy. And just as a teaching tip, I will mention that after any break, even a three-day break from class, it's always good to do a demonstration when they come back in. So what I do is perform this demonstration, and I first have my students focus on the two solutions that I'm going to use in the demonstration. Uh, we'll just call them solution A and B, though I will mention some of the components. Uh, solution A, and the students will notice that it's a light blue color. And my students are pretty astute at this point. We've used so many solutions of compounds of copper that they will guess that there's copper ion in there, and there is copper 2 plus ion. But there's also a chemical in there known as luminol. And some other chemicals, which will be in the written documentation if you want to know the detailed chemistry of this. In our other beaker pitcher, so to speak, we have a colorless solution, and this is 3% hydrogen peroxide, drugstore peroxide, and what it has been done is uh, it's been diluted, so it's even more dilute than regular peroxide. Now, what I'm going to do is take and pour these into this particular setup. What we have here is our three tiers of party glasses, and uh, it's been modified from the Journal of Chem Ed cover because uh, they used, I believe, five tiers. So we have one, three, and seven. So a total of 11 party glasses here. Now, again, it's right after the new year in my class, but at any time of the school year, I'm sure that what you can do is say, let's make a toast to chemistry. And so I bring them up here so that I can see what I'm doing with my students, and then we dim the lights and it's nice if you have music, but we're just going to pour these. Now, do you have to have this kind of a setup to do this demonstration? No, it just adds a little bit more interest to the actual chemiluminescence. Now, with my students, remember, it's the first day of a unit on energy and chemical reactions. And uh, I would talk about this as a reaction which gives off energy, but the energy is in the form of light. And then you can also draw analogies uh, to other objects that they know, or other organisms that they know, for example, fireflies or lightning bugs, that's bioluminescence. But those are also reactions that involve luminol or luminol-type compounds. And most of my students are very familiar with the glow sticks or light sticks, where you bend them and break them and produce light as well. And it's interesting to point out that though we did see a lot of energy in the form of light, that there, it, there is no heat energy associated with this. It is what is known as cold light. And so you can touch the outside of the glass and you can find out that it's still at room temperature. We assume that when anything gives off light, we think that there's going to be heat accompanying it. Not the case. So for this demonstration, it's just kicking off that unit, focusing on a reaction that's giving off energy, and then moving into other activities for my students to do that day. And at that point, they're a little bit hooked just because you've given them something to focus on at the very beginning of that class.